Hey, greetings everyone, GleeCon here, and I am happy to be here. I wanted to get a little shorty episode in tonight, um, didn't want to, to to miss pumping one out. So we have been, of course, w moving through playing World of Warcraft Classic, and check out the last episode if you want to see the latest adventures. We started Ashen Vale um, in Classic with a Horde character, a troll. Um, she kind of did some things around the Splinter Tree post, and... Um, She'll kind of move out from there, so that's fun. We had a couple little close calls and some some fun slaying of the the classic monsters and and some funny moments with the voiceover add-on. We've also been reading through all kinds of books on this show, and and I do urge you if you're new to the series, check out. As you see, we have over a thousand episodes. Check out all of the books. Um, that we've covered and when we started playing classic we started branching off into some of the side lore the the not quite canon stuff that was maybe had the blessing of blizzard but but didn't have anyone um any direct influence from it and the they made a dungeons and dragons setting called War, warcraft classic i mean warcraft the role-playing game and then uh, when the game world of warcraft came out they then revamped everything and made a whole nother clutch of source books and we were Finally getting through the last one. This is the World of Warcraft role-playing game. This book is called Dark Factions, and we've been reading the seventh chapter, which is all about those factions. Um, last time on this, we read about the Bronze Dragonflight, so we're in the midst of the Dragonflights. We've also read Black. Blue is covered in a previous book on a previous episode, and today we're going to have a little shorty with the Green Dragonflight, so stay wide and listen as we talk about Isera's Brood. Um, I don't know how I feel about it. Sometimes it's one of my favorites. And sometimes I feel like it's kind of aloof and um, exactly who Isera and the Green Dragonflight is shifts and is hard to pin down. And um, maybe it's just that I need to continue this journey to have a more cohesive kind of understanding of all of the things in World of Warcraft lore. There's an unknown member, number of members, and I guess that makes sense because so much of their time is spent in the Emerald Dream. But they are neutral good. They're definitely good and um they're not against the laws of man but yeah they're definitely beholden to their own sort of nature first emerald dream first sort of philosophy the home of the green dragon flight has ever been the emerald dream i've never been there but from what the druids tell me it's like azeroth if the civilized races had never touched the world like a blueprint of what the world must have been like at creation and i urge you to read the um the war of the ancients trilogy it's one of the only books where they actually spend some time kind of describing what the Emerald Dream looks like. If that looks anything like the Hinterlands, I suppose I can see the appeal. At any rate, the Green Dragon Flight, much like the Bronze, has ever been distant from mortals, but recently we're seeing more of them. And not for the best of reasons. It seems something called the Nightmare, or the Emerald Nightmare, has overtaken a part of the Emerald Dream. Sounds like more old god corruption to me, and I'm pretty sure that's exactly what it is. Whatever it is, the Nightmare can apparently overtake even the strongest of creatures, including the Green Dragons. Four corrupted Green Dragons have emerged from the Emerald Dream in various locations around the world, such as in Faralas and at Saradin. We can only hope that Isera and the rest of the Green Flight will soon discover the source of the Nightmare's corruption and put an end to it. I, I really look forward to fighting some of those corrupted Green Dragons in Classic, because that's one of the only things um, in my journeys I've never done. Uh, in classic i wasn't quite powerful enough or even had my crap together enough to understand that that was a goal that you should try to do and it's very quickly one of those things that was made defunct i think maybe even by wrath of the lich king it's already been put an end has been put to it the dreaming dragonflight has ever been the strongest force for the protection of nature they're really getting what the has ever been the author was on a kick that day but the recent appearance of the Nightmare transforms some green dragons into terrible monsters. You can see that in the Sunken Temple, too. Since the Emerald Dream seems to represent nature's purest form, as I understand it, green dragons traditionally have spent almost all their time there. They get along with druids and similar folk pretty well, but the rest of us rarely have contact with them. The green dragon flight is one of the three flights responsible for the creation of the first world tree, Nordrasil. I'm still rather curious what they think about the new and improved one, which Staghelm is so proud of. Um, yeah, that's because Neltharian, the Black Dragon Flight was obviously bad and corrupted by the time they made that, and the Blue Dragon Flight was essentially scattered. Malagos was insane, um, so they weren't a part of that either. 
After the War of the Ancients, many night elves took up the new practice of druidic magic. Mm, I think it was already starting to become a thing before that, if you look at War of the Ancients. From this point on, they would sleep and wake periodically, spending much of their time in Isera's realm. 10,000 years later, High Priestess Tyrande Whisperwind awoke the druids all at once, but the dragons did not all emerge from the Emerald Dream to support the elves at war. The Burning Legion fell to the mortal armies at Mount Hyjal, and, but the damage to the world tree Nordrasil prompted Arc Druid Fandral Staghelm to attempt to create another without the support of the ancient dragons who aided in the making of the first. The Snarian Circle supported Fandral in his decision. So some of that is World of uh, is Warcraft 3 stuff, and some of that is what we're dealing with in Classic, and is a big reason why this new world tree was so um, susceptible to corruption. And I wonder if that plays into the um, the grayness of seeing Sylvanas as a villain, and when she burned that world tree down, I don't, I wasn't playing a lot at the start of a BFA, and so I'm not quite sure if she had a reason or if she was just being malicious. But I'm, I'm definitely, that's one of the things I'm, I'm eager to dive into as we continue the lore. With Malfurion Stormrage absent suspiciously, Fandral created a tree called Teldrassil. However, the new tree has not granted the Night Elves immortality. In fact, many plants and animals on Teldrassil suffer strange maladies. And when you go to Darkshore... Um, some of that bleeds into some of the beached creatures. A few people whisper that these problems might stem from the fact that Teldrassil does not have the blessing of the dragons who created Nordrassil. I think that's a valid point. The green dragonflight, unlike the other dragonflights, concerns itself with the druids. It is also one of the most detached from all other groups of mortals. Like most other flights, they oppose the black dragons and the burning legion, but they're rarely seen in the physical world. Ysera rules the green dragon flight from a sanctum within the Emerald Dream called the Eye of Ysera. Marithra, Ysera's daughter, was a major figure in the War of the Shifting Sands a thousand years ago, but she was one of the three dragons who sealed themselves on the opposite side of the Scarab Wall. Presumably, she's not survived all this time, so when we do the Ankaraj raid, maybe we'll see a little bit more of that. The green dragon flight has a significant presence at Mount Hyjal, but the largest known group of greens outside of the Emerald Dream is at the Temple of of Atal Hakkar, also known as the Sunken Temple. That is not a positive clutch either. Those people are, those, those dragons are cursed. They're corrupted. The Green Dragonflight treats its servants with respect, teaching them the secrets of nature and magic as they prove themselves worthy. And the leader is Isera the Dreamer. She's a female Green Dragon Aspect, one of two. Isera is the Green Dragon Aspect charged with the protection of the Emerald Dream. The Druids also told me she's the mother of Cenarius. But since he's not a dragon, I can only assume that isn't meant literally. Yeah. Um, I'm curious for more on that. Um, there also seems to be... Yeah, I think there's like maybe some children that come out of a union between Ysera and some other kind of demigods, maybe scenarios, so that would be weird. My friends in the Cenarian Circle report that she's been silent since the appearance of the Nightmare, and there's some concern that she is in danger. They seem to be hesitant to say it, but some worry she too might be corrupted. I think she's kind of trapped in there. All right, what if you wanted to be a heroic PC and be part of the Green Dragonflight in D&D? Well, heroes working with the Green Dragonflight are likely to face focus on, on investigating the Nightmare. Although most of the flight is also investigating the Nightmare, the flight still supports its members and allies as it always has training the Druids of Azeroth and teaching them how to navigate the Emerald Dream. And none of the source books will ever touch on what a campaign would look like that predominantly took place in the Emerald Dream slash Nightmare. So that's up to you, DMs out there. Um, and you are more than welcome. I actually kind of thought that this... I had a, a, a thought the other day before we get into our other, our other leader and our adventure hook um, about some of the side books that we I found when we were discovering these there are these PDFs of very thorough uh very well made D, &D um modules that deal with like what if you wanted to do the Wailing Caverns what if you wanted to do um I don't know some of the other dungeons in the game Black Fathom Deeps maybe maybe Ragefire Chasm and they are really good modules and I they're so good that I thought that they were actually like official and they're out there, they're in PDF form. I don't think anyone's really profiting off them, but they're totally fair game. 
And I had the idea about why are they so free to do their thing? Why are people so free to do their thing? And it's pretty cool of Wizards of the Coast and previously TSR, we're really Wizards of the Coast, um, to allow that to go on. And I only, I've mentioned this in a couple of other episodes, I'm finishing up this um, kind of historical nonfiction book about the rise of TSR and Dungeons and Dragons, its eventual fall and its acquisition by Wizards of the Coast. And one of the things that happened when Wizards of the Coast acquired it was, I can't remember the exact name, but I guess there's a law kind of baked into the copyrights of Wizards of the Coast that makes it cool for anyone ever to use any of the source books, the source material. I'm also reading this other book. My family uh, got it for me for Christmas or something like that, or my or Father's Day. I don't remember, but they're they're like um, they're like just random quests and tables and ways to generate some things as a DM, um, since I do DM a group. And uh, I just thought to myself, how can these people be selling these books and making money off it when obviously they're using Dungeons and Dragons as the rule set behind it? And that's just part of it. Like if you wanna take the D&D rule set, have at it, make your stuff, make some ancillary material and it might not be labeled you know, Wizards of the Coast or whatever, you're totally allowed to do that, to use their rule system. It's it's legal. Go ahead and make money off it. So if you want to make your own campaigns and uh, publish them, go for it. I support you. And so does so does the, the people at, at Wizards of the Coast, I guess. All right, so Aranakis is a male green dragon. He's the other leader. He is the consort of Isera and is among the greatest of the green dragons. It was Asera who originally gave him the task of guarding the temple of Atahakar in the Swamp of Sorrows. However, Aranakis went insane not long after he entered the temple, and since then the trolls in the temple have dispatched a group to Zulgrub, where they've succeeded in summoning a car into the world. Um, I kind of think one of those quests gives you a trinket called, like, the Jewel of Aranakis or something like that. Aranakis? I don't know. We'll have to wait till our impeccable voiceover chat GPT bot pronounces that for us. Um, but... It's one of the be better trinkets you can get in Classic. And finally, they give us one tiny adventure hook. Powerful, corrupted dr green dragons appear on Azeroth. The heroes must defeat these dragons and discover the source of their corruption. Wow. Um, I mean, I know we've been on a long journey, but come on. What's the, they must have been put under a page limit or something because they're not even trying. Sorry. All right, we got another episode in the pipe 5x5 five five just like that. Thank you so much for watching and for listening, and I will see you all on the very next episode of Lore of Warcraft.